welcome to Telugu One Academy. In today's uh, Andhra Pradesh geography, we're going to look into district profiles of Andhra Pradesh. District profiles means how many districts we do possess, uh, district headquarters, administrative units, and uh, parliamentary uh, units or mandals, uh, demographics, other agriculture sectors, economy, other uh, details, other statistics regarding to the each and every district of Andhra Pradesh. So, uh, Andhra Pradesh currently do have 13 districts. It has been divided into 13 districts. Across the state, we, uh, there are 13 administrative districts. That too, this, the whole region, we know that AP Andhra Pradesh, uh, geologically, it's in the peninsular, peninsular of India. See, this is the state of Andhra Pradesh. Andhra Pradesh is located in the peninsula part of India. So, regionally, unofficially, we have divided Andhra into two unofficial regions. Like, depending upon their uh, geographical uh, features, climate, depending on this, Andhra has been divided into Two unofficial. These are unofficial, not official. Officially means distinct, uh, districts means only administratively we do have only 13 districts. But unofficially, depending upon the region wise, we have divided into two regions. That is coastal Andhra. Coastal Andhra means the districts which compromise in the uh, coastal areas or the seaside area, uh, seaside of the Andhra Pradesh and others are Rail Sima, Rail Sima districts. In coastal Andhra, we do have nine districts. And in Rayalaseema region, we do have four districts. Coming to coastal and the districts, like we have East Godavari, West Godavari, Krishna, Guntur, Prakasam, uh, next uh, Vijayanagaram, Vishakapatnam and Shrikakulam. Uh, and SPS, uh, Sri Potti Sri Ramulu, Nellur district and Vijayanagaram, Vishakapatnam, Shrikakulam. Now coming to Rail Sima districts. In Rail Sima, we do have four districts. These are Karul, Chittur, Vyasar, Kadapa and Anantapur. So this is unofficial or uh, regional wise. Total we have 13 districts. Now coming to in this, in the whole, in these all 13 districts put together in area wise. Coming to area wise, Anantapur is the largest district in the area wise. Means the uh, uh, extension, its geographical extension is larger than all other districts in AP. Srikakulam is the smallest district in area wise in which is in Uttar Andhra. That is called coastal Andhra districts are also called as Uttar Andhra. In Telugu they are called Uttar Andhra. So Srikakulam is the smallest district in area wise. Anantapur is the largest district in area wise. Next coming to most populous. Most populous means district with most population, people, uh, number of people, maximum number of people staying. That is, East Godavari is the most populous district in Andhra Pradesh. So, and Vijayanagaram is the least populous. Vijayanagaram is the least populous. So, now coming to the districts are further again. Uh, see, if any area is divided into districts or subdivided means that is only for administrative convenience, nothing but administrative convenience. So that the policy makers, so that the government can uh, administrate or perfectly administer that particular area and fulfill the needs of uh, people all the needs of almost maximum or all the needs of people in that particular area. For that reason, any area will be divided into districts, mandals, grams, panchayats like this. Okay. So, further, these districts are further again divided into two or more revenue mandals depending upon the size uh, or the need or administrative convenience. They are divided into more further revenue divisions for the administrative and mandals for administrative convenience. 
So, <clears throat> as we know that we have 13 districts as of now. If in future, if there are any plans, we're going to include uh, in the in, even we're going to study them or include them in the existing current districts. This is the map of Andhra Pradesh. This is the map of Andhra Pradesh. So, here lies Shikakulam, Vijayanagaram, Vishakapatnam, East Godavari, West Godavari, Krishna, Guntur, Prakasam, and Sri Potti Sri Ramlu, Nellur district. See, if you observe clearly, all these districts have sea coast. All these districts have sea coast. The coast Chittur district ends here. It doesn't have any. If you see it clearly, Chittur district doesn't have any bordering with the sea. That's the reason these are all called coastal, coastal districts. And in that, in that, Uttarandra. Uttarandra means. Uttar Andhra means, Uttar means north direction. If you take Uttar means north. So Uttar Andhra means north coastal districts. So Shrikakulam, Vijayanagaram, Vishakapatnam comes under the north coastal districts of Andhra Pradesh. So coming to the Uttar Andhra districts. So now we will talk about or looking to Shrikakulam district and its details. So, Shrikakulam district, this is the northernmost district, northernmost coastal district of Andhra Pradesh, which is northernmost coastal district of Andhra Pradesh. So, uh, earlier it used to be called as Shrikakulam. In the, in the time of Muslim invasions, it was called as Shrikakulam. And if you take the history of Shrikakulam, it was under the rule of Eastern Ganga dynasty and the part of Kalinga. Part of Kalinga. Kalinga means like uh, parts of Orissa, parts of Shrikakulam. Orissa and parts of Shrikakulam comes under Kalinga dynasty. And after that, it was under the rule of Eastern Ganga dynasty. In, after that, uh, after the Eastern Ganga dynasty, Muslim rulers invaded Shrikakulam. Then it used to be called as Shrikakulam only. But again, uh, by the advent of uh, Britishers, and then the British rule in the pre-independence era, Shrikakulam was used to, uh, used to be called as Chikakol. It used to be called as Chikakol. So Chikakol is the former name of Shrikakulam at the time of British rule. So uh, this district has derived its name from its headquarters. From its headquarters, Shrikakulam only, Shrikakulam town. So, uh, Shrikakulam district derived its name from its headquarters or administrative uh, town or Shrikakulam district. Actually, it was a, uh, uh, it was a part of, Shrikakulam was a part of Vishakapatnam district. But in August, 19, uh, 15th August 1950, it got bifurcated from Vishakapatnam district. Earlier, it was under the Vishakapatnam district control, but in August 15th, 1950, on August 15, 1950, it has been carved out of. I mean, uh, they have made a separate district carving Shrikakulam and uh, areas and parts of Shrikakulam from Vishakapatnam district in the year 1950. Again in November, so in 1950, it was carved or bifurcated from Vishakapatnam district. But, uh, but again in November 1969, 1969, the district lost, it lost 63 villages from Saluru Taluka and 44 villages from Bobbili Taluka on account of their transfer to the, the then newly constituted Gajapati Nagaram Taluka of Vishakapatnam district. Once it was formed in 1950, it was okay. But in 1916, what happened? 63 villages of Saluru Mandalam and 44 villages of Bobbili Taluka has been, has been uh, bifurcated and they have been added to the then, the then Gajapati 
Nagaram Taluka of Vishakapatnam district. Earlier, see, earlier Vijayanagaram, Shrikakulam were the part of Vishakapatnam district only. Shrikakulam was formed in the year 1950. Vijayanagaram was formed in the year 1979. So, but in 69, Vijayanagaram was not, Gajapati Nagaram was not a part of Vijayanagaram. So, these all districts, uh, talukas were added to Gajapati Nagaram Taluka, which is a part of Vishakapatnam itself. Again, after 10 years of this, again, the, uh, these will be, Gajapati Nagaram will become a part of Vijayanagaram district. So, Shrikakulam has been carved out of Vishakapatnam district. So, if coming to the direction of a, a location of Shrikakulam district, it is an extreme north, northeastern district of Andhra Pradesh. This is the this is the state boundary, state border uh, of Andhra Pradesh. Which district is the northernmost state border of Andhra Pradesh? Is means Shrikakulam district is the extreme northern district of Andhra Pradesh, situ situated within the geographical coordinates. Okay, uh, that is in which latitudes and longitudes. So, uh, the Nagavali, Vamsadhara, Suvarnamukhi, Vegavati, Mahendrayana, Gaumukhi, Champavati, Bahuda and Kumbikota Gedda are the important rivers of districts. What are the important rivers of this district, Shrikakulam district are? Nagavali, Vamsadhara, Bahuda, Suvarna, Suvarnamukhi, Vegavati, Mahendra Tanaya, Gomukhi, Champavati, Bahuda, Kumbi Kota Gadda or the most important rivers of Shrikakulam district. So, uh, now coming to Vamsadhara. Vamsadhara rise, river rises in the eastern ghats of Odisha state and enters Shrikakulam district in Bhamini Mandal and finally falls into the Bay of Bengal near Kalinga Patnam. Vamsadhara originated in Odisha but enters in the eastern ghats of Odisha, but enters Shrikakulam near Bhamini Mandal. Bhamini Mandalam and enters the sea. Means it enters the state of Andhra in uh, uh, district of Andhra Pradesh in Bahamini Mandal and finally falls into Bay of Bengal in Kalinga Patnam. In Kalinga Patnam beach, it enters, falls into, it merges with the Bay of Bengal. Next, Nagavali. The Nagavali in Suvarnamukhi rivers also originate in the eastern ghats. While Nagavali in uh, Vangada Mandal. See, all the major rivers of Shrikakulam districts have originated in Odisha, eastern ghats of Odisha like Vamsadhara, Nagavali and Suvarnamukhi. Nagavali, Vamsadhara enters in Bahimini Mandalam and uh, merges with sea in uh, Bay of Bengal and Ka Kalinga Patnam. And Nagavali in Suvarnamukhi. Well, Nagavali enters in Vangavara, uh, Vangara Mandalam, in Vangara Mandalam and continues, confluence joins the Bay of Bengal at Kallepalli near Shrikakulam, rising in Pachipenta Hills. The Vegavati River flows from west to east. So, the uh, most important rivers of uh, Shrikakulam originates in um, Eastern Ghats of Orissa, but they enter in or, uh, dist Shrikakulam district and confluence with Bay of Bengal in the district of Shrikakulam. Total Shrikakulam has 193 kilometers of 193 kilometers of coastline. How much? 193. That is highest in total AP. Shrikakulam has the longest coastline in a Andhra Pradesh. That is how much? 193 kilometers. So, now we are looking to the boundaries and topography of Shrikakulam district. Um, it is bounded with, with uh, in north it is bounded with which state or district? Uh, east, west and south. Now, boundaries and topography. Again in May 1979, we have known that the district has undergone major territorial changes on account of the formation of new district with headquarters at Vijayanagaram, 
which involved transfer of Saluru, Bobbili, Parvatipuram and Chipurpalli Talukas. Again, in 1969, it has undergone bit changes where Saluru and Bobbili Taluka, some parts of villages of Saluru and Bobbili Taluka have been uh, given to or taken away by Gajapati Nagaram Taluka. But again in 1979, with the formation of new district called Vijayanagaram. As Vijayanagaram has been formed, so which involved transfer of total transfer of Total transfer of Saluru, Bobbili, Parvatipuram, Chipurpalli, Talukas to Vijayanagaram districts. In now looking to the boundaries means in the eastern direct in the east direction it is bounded with Bay of Bengal. Bay of Bengal is the easternmost boundary of Srikakulam and north and northwest. It is bounded with Orissa, with the state of Orissa. In the south, in the south and southwest, in the south and southwest, it is bounded with Vijayanagaram. See, if we, this is the location of Srikakulam district. In the east, Bay of Bengal. In the south and southwest, totally. South and southwest, Vijayanagaram. And in the north and no, some northwest, Odisha. So, it has three boundaries. Eastern uh, boundary is a uh, uh, water body, that is a Bay of Bengal. And northern, northern west boundary is another state, that is our st state boundary, Odisha. And south and southwest boundary is with Vijayanagaram. Now coming to natural resources of Shikakulam district. What kind of natural resources it do possesses it do have? So Shikakulam district which is situated in the northern coastal plain of the agroclimatic zone and partly in the tribal areas. These tribal areas are we called as uh, re, uh, reg uh, regencies or oh, sorry agencies. This tribal area we call them as agencies. So it comes under north coastal plain of the agroclimatic zones. We know we do have six agroclimatic zones depending upon the um, climate they do possess. For the our convenience, we have divided state into six agroclimatic zones. The district has two natural regions. It possesses both. Agro, northern coastal agroclimatic zone and even the tribal region area also. It has tribal region as well as coastal region also, coastal plain region also. So the district has two natural regions. What are they? The hilly region also called agency area, the most inhabited by tribal population and the plain area, normal plains and the hilly regions which is a tribal area which is most popularly called as agencies and other one is plain area. The, uh, in hilly regions obviously tribes it is mostly inhabited by tribal people of that locality or that area. Uh, now coming to the profile of this state in irrigation it has major and medium irrig irrigation projects. It has major both major and medium irrigation projects such as BRR Vamsadhara project. Next one is uh, Maddavalsa, Totapalli, Narayanpura Manikat, Kalingadala Reservoir, Dabbar Singhi Reservoir, Bondigedda Reservoir, uh, Gajilagadda Reservoir, Totapalli Reservoir and Paidigam Reservoir. It has both. BRR Vamsadhara Reservoir is a major, res major reservoir, irrigation project. This is a major irrigation project. So other natural resources, what kind of other natural resources it does possesses? Srikakulam district is leading in manganese. It is a leading producer in Manganese production. It is a leading district in manganese production. Next, 
Coming to textile industries, Ponduru is famous for khadi, khadi textiles. Ponduru, a place called Ponduru in Shrikakulam district is very famous for khadi uh, textiles or khadi garments. Even Indira Gandhi used to order her sarees only from Pandur. She used to wear khadi cotton sarees which are from Ponduru of Shrikakulam district only. Means that uh, high quality they do possesses that demand for this Ponduru khadi uh, garments. Next, district forest consists maximum number of Moduga chetlu, Moduga trees. Uh, means if if you uh, look into the uh, forest area of Shrikakulam, all maximum you get maximum number of Moduga trees or Moduga forest tree. It has more number of Moduga trees in their district. It has longest coastline with the state that is 193 kilometers. In some book it's written as 200 kilometers. You can take it as a 193 kilometers. So coming to natural resources, it is a lay, uh, leading producer in manganese. Next one is, it is famous for khadi cotton, khadi textiles. Next, it has, it uh, district forest consists more number of Moduga trees and it has highest coastline, longest coastline of Andhra Pradesh. That is the natural resources of Shrikakulam districts. Now coming to agriculture. Agriculture. So, we know that Andhra Pradesh is a uh, agrarian state. Andhra Pradesh is an agrarian state. It almost 60 uh, percent, above than 60 percent people depend uh, on the agriculture directly or indirectly agriculture and allied sectors. It, like that only even Shrikakulam is also an agrarian district. So the role of agriculture sector in district economy is very significant. However, out of 43 percent of main workers in the district population comes under this category. Nearly 47.36 percent of the uh, main workers are from agrarian sector only. 32 percent cultivators and agricultural laborers are still depend on agriculture. 32 percent of cultivators and agriculture laborers still depend on agriculture sector only. So, uh, in the district of Chicago, agriculture is the very significant sector. It's a very main sector. Like in other districts or other states of uh, India, other districts of Andhra Pradesh and other states of India, even Chicago, agriculture in Chicago district is also rain dependent and monsoon dependent. It is rain dependent and monsoon dependent. We do have irrigational facilities but mostly mostly agriculturists or farmers depend on rains and monsoons for their field or harvest. Next coming to education. Shrikakulam district is a backward district when come to education. When coming to education it is a backward and it has very poor infrastructure. Uh, you taking like name the schools or dropouts or joinings. So it is a backward district when coming to education. <coughs> so coming to industries. There are 25 large and medium scale industries in the district involving the total investment of 7 crores 75,799.80 lakhs and providing employment to around 7,000 persons. They do have only 25 large and medium scale industries. Both medium and uh, large scale industries are only 25 uh, in number. Say how much uh, employment they are providing? 7,130. They are providing nearly 7,000 
person personals are employed in this 25 large and medium scale industries um, they do have like jute mills and next uh, other uh, sources of mills handicraft mills so apart from this large and medium scale industries district of shikakulam also ha do have tiny and small scale industries it does have around uh, district of Chicago has more number of tiny and Chicago, uh, small scale industries than large scale industry. It has nearly 1100, 1100 tiny and small scale industries and business employment with an investment of 29,733 lakhs and providing employment to 35,316 people. Large scale industries are providing hardly only 7,000 employment, but tiny and small scale industries are providing nearly 35,000 employment. 35,000 employment in tiny and small scale industries. So, uh, in the, by this figure or by this number, we can understand that Chicago, in, in the district of Chicago, more dependency on tiny and small scale industries or cottage industries. The district offers tremendous potential for establishment of more industries such as large, medium and small scale industries in view of Government of India, Government of Andhra incentives, cheap land, labor, cheap land and labor cost and natural resources. So to increase this number, this number of 25 of large and medium scale industries, Government of India and Government of Andhra Pradesh is increasing investors is increasing investors to invest or establish any industries in the region of Chicagoulum by giving them cheap land, cheap labor on other natural resources or subsidies, uh, tax benefits, so many things. Now coming to connectivity. So uh, how, connecti uh, how connected it to the other parts of the world or other parts of the state or country. So the district spread with National Highway 5 around 194 kilometers from Kandivalasagedda at Ranasthalam Mandalam to Ichapuram Mandalam. So it has one national highway that is National NH5 or now NH16, 16 around how many kilometers around 194 kilometers. We can see around 200 kilometers from Kandivalsagedda at Ranasthalam Mandalam to from Kandivalsagedda to Ichapuram Mandalam. Ichapuram is the border of uh, it's a border border town of uh, Shikakulam and Andhra Pradesh or Andhra Pradesh. It is the border uh, town of Andhra and Odisha. Ichapuram is the last place in Odisha. Sorry, in Andhra Pradesh is the last town of Andhra border. Now coming to economy. So uh, GDP, it has 19,942 crores of GDP. It has how much? 19,942 crores of GDP. That is, it contributes. 3.8% contribution to the GSDP. How much? This is gross domestic, uh, domestic district productivity. This is gross state uh, productivity. Sorry, gross district domestic productivity. Gross state domestic productivity. So, how much it contributes to the GSDP to the state? It contributes 3.8% of the state GSDP. So, what is the per capita income at current prices of 2013 and 14? 57,174 is the per capita income of how much? 57,174 is the per capita income of the at current prices 2013 and 14. In this, in this total, Agriculture, how much agriculture do contribute for this district domestic project? Product 
4855 crores is a agricultural contribution to the gddp how much 4855 crores from, comes from the contribution of the agriculture sector now coming to industrial sectors 4114 crores is a contribution of industrial sector to the gddp civic sector how much 10000 973 crores is a contribution of service sector to the gddp means service sector contributes more in, in the district of chikakulam service sector in district of chikakulam's gddp service sector's contribution is more and next agriculture sector and next industrial sector industrial sector is the least contributor for the gddp of chikakulam district we can convert in like this so this is the profile of the shikakulam district so uh, that's all for today thank you